Welcome to a Lunch with Biggie, a podcast about small business and creatives sharing their stories and inspiring you. My guest today is a man of many talents. You could say he's a polymath. He's a lawyer, a wedding efficient, public speaker, writer, comedian, content strategist, photographer, content creator, lover of mayo and of bacon. And he's also the co-host of Dating Kind of Sucks. Please welcome Adam Avidable. What's going on, Adam? How you doing, Biggie? Good to see you. Good to see you, man. It's been a it's been a while. Yes, it has. So I'm uh, I'm definitely excited uh, to get a chance. I appreciate you taking uh, time out of your busy schedule to kind of chat with me during my lunch break. Um, usually, my first question is, what's your go to lunch sandwich? Anything you want? What do you usually uh, What's your usual go to lunch? My go to lunch, uh, if I eat lunch, I tend to be the type that I'll start working and then it won't be till like two or three. I'll realize I haven't eaten. And then, am I going to eat lunch? Is it going to be dinner? Dinner. Yeah, but then I'm then I I, I get too much food because then I'm like starving at that point. And, yep. then, and then I yeah. Uh, but I um I actually you know if, if I'm out I tend to try to go with some type of protein salad. That's okay. usually my my thing to go to. But uh, otherwise, I'm all about uh, like a good appetizer, like uh, some type of like b- bar food. It's always bar food. So like I'll go to wherever I'm going to go, some type of local pub. Uh, sit at the sit at the bar and order like you know their fried pretzels, deep fried pretzels, or I don't know if that's a thing, but it should be um, or whatever you know, I mo- eat it. mozzarella sticks, something like that. So I, I really mix it up on what type of unhealthy food I feel like eating when I'm sitting in a bar. But then at the same time, you know, you 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 kind of rationalize it with like having a salad and protein. So right, yeah, that kind of works. Yeah, yeah, that kind of works out. Yes. No, I totally get that. Um, so we, I've known you. I was thinking about this when I was like prepping for this. I think I've known you for over eight years. And uh, and I and we met. I, I believe I, I we we met through Florida BlogCon. I believe is kind of where it is. And yeah, then I started right. following you on social and everything. And one of the things is I've always admired your creativity, all the different things that you weigh to showcase it. Um, and like I mentioned in my intro, you've written you've written books. You've done stand up comedy, photography, podcast. Can you talk a little? Is there like a constant thread on all these endeavors that maybe like that you've kind of learned or that you kind of bring? take from one to the other to kind of do those things because i mean a lot of people want to do things like this but don't do it but that's one of the one things that i enjoy about you is that you actually are doing all of them i i think the the common thread that i have come up with is creating content that resonates with people okay and creating something that makes people think react laugh cry whatever feel good about themselves and and that's that's the common thread is i like to do something that is going to make someone remember it later on like when okay. they reflect back back on it they're going to have some type of positive memory uh, and they're they're going to think fondly of whatever happened um Stand up allows me to make people laugh. Uh, this when I do storytelling that makes people think a little bit more. Photography a lot. A lot of it is making people just like either in awe of nature. If I'm doing nature photography, we do a lot of human figure photography. And there's nothing more amazing. And this has happened multiple times where I've used a model who's never modeled before, and then afterwards they're like, I never felt like so confident until afterwards. Like I felt like it was so great getting you know all these people commenting and saying, Wow, that looks amazing, and like it had helped boost their self-confidence and make yeah. them feel better about themselves and my writing i want people to think about you know and make people think and so yeah it is all about that i want to be help people learn the podcast is all about helping people learn and grow and be better and that's that's really what i want to do i just want to try to be the jimmy cricket to everybody okay i like how you named like you kind of self and it's and it's it is like the per definition you are a you know pretty much a man of many talents you're a polymath you yep. really do a little bit of everything um and w- which i think is amazing now let's talk a little bit about because the one thing that i kind of m- one of my goals on this podcast is the fact that obviously i want to be able to tell people's stories and kind of you know either creatives or small business and and but not everyone is a creative or anything like that. like some people some people just want to learn and meet new people but one of the things that i I'm always fascinated by is failure. Like most people wouldn't try so many things. How do you overcome that negative voice? Cause like, just like you mentioned, Jiminy cricket, how do you overcome that little negative voice? Because that's usually the loudest in your head. That's true. And I would say that first of all, you do have to have a little bit of an ego. Yeah. I think that that's part of it. You have to have a little okay. bit of an ego. Just like you have to have enough just to give you that push into trying because it can be a little daunting. I remember the first time I tried stand-up comedy, I was terrified. It was just, the whole concept was terrifying. And I wouldn't even do karaoke at that point. So, like, I did not like the idea of it. And then after I started stand-up, I was like, oh, if I can tell jokes in front of people, I can get up and sing badly in front of people. Like, that's, that's no big deal. Yeah. But with what I learned, and I think stand-up comedy helped me with this more than anything, was that when you start doing stand-up and you start doing well at stand-up and you have audiences that are doing well, it gets boring. 
like the succeeding part is the boring part. Yeah. Because after a while, it's rote. It's it's just muscle memory. I can do it in my sleep. I can do it drunk off my ass. I can do whatever, and I can just I can do my I can do an hour of material without even thinking about it. So then, when you actually bomb, when you do fail, it's energizing. Yeah. It's like, oh, thank God. Okay, now what did I do wrong? Like, where yeah. where was the spot that I lost him? What can I do to tweak this? And it actually kind of energizes. So that's that's kind of how I feel. It's like doing something um, and and failing miserably just gives you a space to start fresh and gives you things to learn correct um and even like photography i mean photography most of my photography is a failure is an abject failure but that's why i take a thousand photos so then when i result when i end up with like 30 amazing photos that are just like wow how did you ever take these it's because i took you know another 1970 of that, them or whatever, you know, <laughs> that nobody's ever gonna see that are you know scorched earth gone <laughs> i failed on all of those to get to the few that i didn't fail and yeah. so i think that you have to work that into your life that you have to fail to do better if everything came easy and you're successful at everything then it's all boring and you just might as well not even try correct no i, I definitely agree it's uh, it's definitely the that and the journey of it. I think that's like kind of the, the whole aspect of being able to do it. Um, one of the things that I, I know that you've, uh, you, you know, you've been consistent, obviously, with your current work and how you write and everything like that. But you've actually written, you've written one book and you're currently writing another book. So I know that you, uh, you wrote Interview with a Celebrity. And then now, from what I saw, you're currently working right now on BT James and the Ultimate Safety Vest. Right. So, right. Uh, so, so, so talk a little my, bit about that. It's actually my third book that I'm working on. All right, on. the third book. So I had interviews with dead celebrities, which I wrote, I want to say, oh, it was almost a decade ago, maybe yep. like 12 years ago. Um, probably a little... I, I don't know that I would recommend it right now. Like, it, it's one of those books that that I that it was funny at the time, but now I'm like, did I say some things in there that were funny that maybe you're a little problematic? I won't now? lie. I won't lie. I, I, as I as I reread some of it, yeah. I was kind of I, I was like, oh, I'm like, this is uh, timing wise, maybe not as much on some, but some and some were hilarious. Yeah, because so. there were some so, fake. Yeah. They're they're all fake interviews with soldiers after they died. And yeah, so, yeah. Some of them were not. Not exactly, uh, yeah. So I, I, it's one of those things I'd love to go back and redo someday, uh, and maybe a little bit more of a socially conscious uh, uh, kind of mind mindset. Yeah. Um, but I had another book I wrote under a pen name um, last uh, oh about five six years ago called hashtag Me Too a supernatural thriller. Okay. I don't know if you ever knew about that one. No, ah. I didn't. So it's it's about a world where magic is based, and all uh, and basically all your uh, spells are on your phone that we call wands. You just buy your wand instead of the iPhone, and uh, it's an app. So you just download the right app and you can do spells. And there's a whole bunch of murder uh, mysteries around it. There's oh, a, that sounds cool. There's a black black market spell called hashtag Me Too that allows um, women to turn men into women. For as long as they'd like to try to help men learn empathy and learn what it's like to walk in a woman's shoes, and then there's a bunch of murders around this app, and so somebody's trying to investigate those. So that was another book. Uh, my concepts are always very crazy, like yeah, I, no. Uh, and then my new one that I'm working on right now that I've actually been working on for way too long because I, I kind of took a I took some time off through uh, with doing, I was dealing with uh, with uh, my, my mother, yeah, uh, yeah. which I'm sure we'll talk about, but. Um, and uh, it's called uh, BT James and the Ultimate Safety Vest, and it's about a kid who brings in what he thought was his uncle's safety vest for school to show off it during homeroom, and it turns out that it's more than that. There's a shooting at the school. School goes into lockdown. The, ve- the vest gets activated. It's actually a time machine, and it transports the student and the shooter back in time to World War One Belgium, and they have to learn to trust each other, and, how- and they have to work together in order to figure out how to survive and make it home. So it's going to be a lot of discussion about um, nature versus nurture, mental health, about the obviously the gun problem at the same time, but all trying to teach it in, in a way that's uh, you know talk about it in a way that's uh, that's you know kind of an adventure at the same time. Yeah, when I uh, when I when I when I when I don't when I went into the crowdfunding and I went to do that, I, the other part of me was like, oh, I was like, this is like way too close to home with, uh, especially with uh, I have a high school daughter, so it's like and, and the kid in school, so and dealing with that. And but at the same time, I'm like, oh, I'm like, I'm really kind of curious. I'm like, oh, I'm gonna, I can't wait to get it, so I can see where it goes and where it leads. So I'm looking for, I'm definitely looking forward. To it. It's it's a very sensitive topic, and it was one of those things that before when I had the idea for it, I was doing some research, and I'm like, I'm on TikTok, and so there's a lot of a lot of people that are the, the youngest generation on TikTok. And what I've realized about that with them is that this concept of school shootings and, and, and the risks they're in, they're in and everything, I, that's just daily life for them. That's something that's not a, like, it's not a new thing. It is their life. It's what they know. Correct. And they joke about it. They have really dark humor. Like, it's crazy how, how dark the humor is for kids, the um, younger kids nowadays. Yeah. And, and so I realized that talking about it in a way... Um, is just talking about something they already like acknowledge and it's like part of the, but, but for uh, anyone who's older looking at it it's like oh is this topic going to be too much when that's just their everyday life yeah they're living it yeah we just don't realize it 
No, I totally get that. Um, so I brought up, I brought up obviously the fact that you uh, in the intro, that, and, and we've kind of talked about it. You and Sarah do uh, dating kind of sucks. It's a podcast about sex, dating, relationships. You've been doing it since 2018. Talk a little bit about what made you guys want to come up with that, and then just kind of like how you guys have been able to keep it consistent and going constantly. Because as someone who's obviously doing a podcast by myself. It's, you know, it's always, I think of the dynamics of everything, either when you're doing a small business, something like that, having two people trying to work together, but at the same time, also all the things, the ins and outs that go with it when you're trying to do a podcast. Well, you know, it, 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 that's a very good point. In the spirit of innovation, basically, we took an idea, stole an idea, and uh, just made it better. Um, that's uh, that's where we came from. Uh, Sarah actually already had a blog called Dating Kind of Sucks. Okay. And I loved her stories, and she was writing all the time about all these bad dates. And one night we were just chatting, and I said, we should start a podcast. It should just be a, just use the same name and just go into all these stories that we both have. And so that's what we did. And uh, we didn't know anything about podcasting. We didn't know anything about each other. We'd actually never really, we'd never met in person. So you guys, oh, it was only through like you. How do you guys meet through social media? I was I was teaching a workshop at Florida Blog Con, and she was in the audience, but I didn't actually meet her. Um, she left uh, shortly after that, and then moved to Nashville. And I was still in Orlando, but I was following her on Twitter and reading her stuff. And so then we just started to communicate. So it was something we did, we didn't meet in person until we started recording in like March. Didn't meet until December when she came back for Christmas. Um, and so that was kind of a neat little thing. It was after we had already done so many episodes to finally meet for the first time. Yeah, and. Um, you know, we, we did a couple phone calls to test and see if we had a good conversation style, and, and it seemed to go flow pretty, pretty well. And then the audience resonated tremendously with the first episode. Like, it, it did really well, and uh, I was like, oh, well, this is something we should do. And then over the time, yes, we've had we've had periods where she got sick of it, I got sick of it. Uh, she's been actually in a, in a relationship now for, for go, going on uh, her third year I was going to say, a few yeah. years now. And so she was like, you know, I don't want to keep talking about dating. So we're actually we're pivoting slowly. Uh, we, we now kind of call it the DKS podcast, and we kind of talk about uh, society as well. She does a travel segment on there. So it was part of like, okay, well, you know, we, we grow as people, and we were not the same people we were when we started. Like, she's very different. I'm, I'm very different. So why wouldn't the podcast be different? So let's let's – figure out ways to, to grow this uh, to kind of come up with us so we do travel uh, we, we do talk about things that are maybe more than just in the dating realm and uh, try to make sure that it's a, a you know has an appeal to a lot of people and then the big rule is that if one of us needs a break and it's like hey I don't, wanna, I don't feel like doing an episode right now we're just like okay let's just skip a week it's not the end of the world you know, yeah. the, 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 world, the world will keep spinning. Our audience will be fine if we, if we come out a week later. You know, we still we have advertisers, but they're not like, you know, they're not beating down our door if we don't do an episode. So, it, yeah, that's, that was part of it is having a little bit more of a relaxed attitude with it. No, I think that's, I think that's great, the flexibility to be able to do that. I think that's like one of those things that's always a, a good one to go with. What, what um, I guess, like, what, I guess what's the hardest part about doing the show? Coming up with something new every year, because we do every two weeks. Yeah. Uh, coming up with something that's going to be either it's new or is uh, we try to rotate. Like one week, if we talk about something related to sex, we try to say, okay, let's talk about more relationship dynamics or dating or culture. Like, And so trying to come up with something that'll be interesting, that will maybe be on the zeitgeist so that it'll, it'll do well, uh, but also something that's, um, you know, that, that's, that we can both have something of value to add to it is a big part of it. Yeah. Because there's times that she'll come up with a topic and I'm like, I don't really know what I would add to that. Or she has a, to- or I have a topic and she's like, I have nothing, I don't know anything about that or whatever. So we, we have to come up with something that'll, that like works with both of us. Yeah, because you both want to be able to kind of provide content or be able to, at least be able to provide a perspective to it. We do. And, and my, because my biggest concern is I'm very, I'm very authoritative and I'm very commanding like just in general like when I, I like I, I just act like everything is for me I mean just a typical you know white male uh, you know attitude everything's mine of course it is you know this is all mine it was all created for me um, patriarchy but yes so I, I like I, I still have that attitude and so people tend to um, usually defer to me and so one thing nice about Sarah is that she will uh, she stands up to me like she'll call me out she'll say stuff she will argue with me she won't just go along yeah but I've also had to as we started but when we when we do episodes to keep in mind hey there's two of us I should shut up occasionally and make sure she has the space to speak if she wants to even if she doesn't want to at least give her that space so that was a learning that was a big learning part for me was being able to take a breath and just shut the fuck up basically and just let her let her talk yeah. No, I, I, I think that's super important. Sometimes for me, being as a host, that's like even a learning aspect of it as well, because I even will sometimes be like, shut up and just let them talk. So I totally, uh, I totally get that. I, uh, I, so I know during the, so I know during the day you do some copyright, um, content strategy. 
but you also are also constantly always creating content, especially on TikTok, podcast, photography. How do you balance that, like the world of, you know, trying to do work, but at the same time, you know, obviously pay bills, but at the same time, do all the other, all the other activities that you also do as well. Any chance that I have to procrastinate on doing paid work and do something fun, I will. Uh, okay. That's basically my, my priority. I wish I had some great like tips for organizing. I am terrible at it. I know I have. I keep a task list of what needs to be done, and yeah. I'm like, all right, I'm gonna, you know, I try to be like, let me try to get three things done before lunch, and then I can goof off, you know, or yeah. something like that. And, and that, that's really what I try to do, and it usually works out. But then there's some days I'm like, I don't feel like doing any work today, so I'm just not gonna do any of it, and then I'll have to work on Saturday. And so, so yeah, my my, my planning is never never great. Um, my goal because my goal is to get to a place where I'm doing only the things I want to do, correct, full time, and not have to worry about someone else uh, someone else's work. No, I, I, I totally get that. Um, one of the things that I do enjoy watching, and you've definitely amassed, I think it's like over 170,000 followers, is on TikTok. Um, I'm kind of curious because, and and I kind of think I know got some of your answer based on what one of the things of your common thread on what you're trying to create things, but what advice would you give for folks like me or others that like may, have, may have a TikTok, but they, they haven't really capitalizing on its power yet? Like, what... what what advice would you have for folks like that? Um, because you do a really good job at, you know, and I, and I love it because you create not only your own stuff, but then you also obviously react and, and discuss other people's stuff um, and be able to kind of go that route. That, that, is, that is a hard question to answer just because TikTok's algorithm is such a confusing mess. Um, and I can, because sometimes I will work on something and I'll be like, this is going to be brilliant. Like, this is this is so funny and it's quick and people are going to want to share it and it will just get like 10,000 views and that'll be it. And then I'll do something just off the cuff and it'll like be like 900,000 views. And so it's, I, 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 I think you just have to create content that's true to your message stick to your message and try to step outside your zone a little bit in finding other people that maybe disagree with your message and then trying to correct them or offer in not necessarily correct them but offer insight into why yeah. you know your perspective might help them and you might find a smaller audience as a result of that but i think that doing one thing i've never done is any of like the dances or any correct. of the trends i've yeah. never I've never i've never tried to do any of that stuff um just because uh, what does that do if someone follows me because they see me do a silly dance on a trend or something like that that's not the content i'm writing they're, they're not going to last uh so i'd rather the people who see my content say oh this is a message that i'd like to share i'd like to participate in. and that's the other thing too is create something that someone wants to share yeah um, and keep in mind basic marketing uh, tenants too. Like, uh, try to capture it in the first two seconds. Like in the first two seconds, make sure that whatever you're going to say makes them want to keep watching just a little bit more. Uh, if you can finish on something that ends in a loop, so it almost looks like you're uh, yep. like it's, it's one one long loop. That's that's always fantastic. I don't do that because I have a catchphrase at the end that I have to do. Yes, uh, we'll accident- talk about that. Acc- okay, accidentally. Uh, but yes. Um, so, but if you can do that and just keep in mind, you know, put text up there, use hashtags and things like that. Just don't use them aggressively. Uh, I think you you, you, can, you can find your audience. Yeah. Yeah, I definitely. It's definitely a, a, a game, and it's one of those where I sometimes I battle with it because, and I think, and I don't know if you ever experienced this or, or had people experience this, but sometimes I feel like no one wants to see this, or oh, I already did this, or no one wants me to have to repeat myself or say or tell people about me or show something an aspect of what I do for my business, um, and a lot of times it's because we think just because we remember it doesn't mean that they actually saw it. That is very true. And actually, uh, Sarah and I get into that sometimes because I'll be like, hey, I want to revisit this topic that we did, you know, four years ago or five years ago. And she's yeah. like, but we already did it. And I was like, yeah, but that was five years ago. It was a, you know, we have some of the same listeners, but we are also different. Our perspective is going to be different. And we have, you know, and it's going to be new to a lot of people. And I feel the same way about TikTok because I, I have one that I can always do. Like I could do it once a week and it would get the same reaction. It's talking about red flag movies because it's a very controversial topic. A lot of people don't like the idea of it, et cetera. And so I know I can always do it. I just have to think of how can I word it this way so it's a little bit different. Like, let me, yeah. am I going to have a new movie I'm going to throw in there? Am I going to have more explanation? Am I going to do a longer video? So I think as long as you're still tweaking it, but you have to keep in mind there is an audience what you do like you know you're like um your concept of, of like wrapping everything in the sandwiches and all that like uh, when you when you sell your merch i think it's brilliant i think like people would love to see the little behind the scenes because i know and you probably know this too when you see someone else's behind the scenes on how they yeah they do that you probably watch it i do like th- there's those candy making ones where like they're making the and like i've seen those that i will watch every one of those because they're just it's like it's like soothing almost yeah. to, to watch to watch them no i totally get that and and so 
for anyone who follows Adam, and if you don't, trust me, I'm going to put all the information so you guys could follow him. But you we may have seen a picture of him in a tub with bacon, or you may have even heard him point to his picture and say, that's me with bacon. Um, can you tell people a little bit of how you came up with that idea? Um, sure. Because <laughs> I, I'll, I, I know that I totally, when I initially first saw the pictures um, of the tub, and then you basically commando with bacon um I'm the, the, i think one of the first questions i may have asked and i'm going to ask it anyhow is how how much bacon did you put in there sure so tell people a little bit about that concept of where that kind of came because it does it's become your catchphrase it's become a viral thing but it's also a thing of beauty it's also a beautiful picture um and yeah it was most of it was accidental and not to be pedantic but it's actually and this is bacon yes. that's, that's the actual uh, the actual catchphrase i had to do the voice and everything with it but um it, it, it was funny. I so I do photography, as we said. I wanted a bathtub for backyard photo shoots, and I got one. And before I had any of my models doing anything, I was like, I want to do something crazy with it. And I was like, what if I did like a milk bath? Because a lot of women will do like these milk bath boudoir shoots where they're like floating yes. serenely in the milk with the flowers and and everything. I was like, I want to do that, but with bacon. So I went to a bacon supply. I mean, not a bacon supply store, a, re, a restaurant supply store. Yes. Uh, and I bought out the entire supply of bacon. They had uh, like the pre-cooked restaurant bacon, uh, and it was it was a little over a thousand pieces, I think. And uh, so it comes pre-cooked, so I didn't have to cook it. Yep. And then uh, came and basically had to like peel it off all the paper and everything like that, and just put it into a big tray. And then I had all the sketches for the photos that I wanted. And uh, I I had a friend. Uh, I stripped down and got in the bathtub, and then she like covered me up with the bacon and then arranged it so it looked good. Like it looked like I was sitting on pillow. We had pillows in there too, so the bacon would look like it was yep. all the way to so the top. Like it was totally full. Yeah, we had to, yeah, we had to yeah, fill, yeah. fill it as much as possible. And then. Uh, uh, she would stand on a ladder and take a couple pictures and then come down and show me and then we'd change them and uh, we were out in the sun for like three hours um, I uh, the, the whole backyard smelled like bacon uh, the dogs kept were like trying to going freaking be, uh, trying out. to get outside they were so desperately um, and then it, it, was, it was a lot of fun and then afterwards I remember I got out and I dove into the right into the pool and like just left a streak of grease in the pool and then I and I took a shower and it was like an hour shower I was just trying to scrub out the grease but I my skin glowed for days like it was great um, so then I was like oh, this is cool so then I, I posted the photos the photos went viral and then I had one of them framed on canvas the like one of them of me just the, the basic one of me laying in the back because I did a bunch of like close ups with like where my head is half buried in bacon etc yeah. um, and so I had that hanging behind me and this is where all the accidental start stuff comes in. Uh, I had it hanging behind me at my office because I had all my photography hanging behind me, but that was one hanging right over my shoulder. And I would do a TikTok, and then I would have a bunch of people comment and say, "What? Are, what is that behind you?" So in the comments, I'd be like, "Oh, that's me in a bacon boudoir." See my pin post because I had a pin post where I kind of did I did a little back behind the scenes. And someone was like, "You know, you should just like after your video, you should just answer that question ahead of time, like just preemptively do it." So I would do my TikTok, and I'd just be like, "Oh, and this is bacon," and I would just point at it and say that, and it became a catchphrase. And I didn't realize that until I would record a TikTok not at my desk, I was in my car or something like that, and everybody would just keep commenting, "And this is bacon." Like so, they started commenting, and I was like. I guess I have to bring that with me now. So when I when I hit the road in uh, 2000, uh, 2020, 2021, whatever it was that I hit the road, um, I brought that with me. I didn't bring any other photography with me except that, and it traveled with me everywhere I've been ac across the country. I set it up in hotel rooms, and I put it behind me wherever I am. Uh, in the car, it's behind me, and I point at it and say, and this is bacon. Um, and now it has become like just a complete slogan. Um, I absolutely love, love this. Uh, I use... I'll use you. I'll, I've talked about you. I may have never said your name, but I have, I have brought you up because you also have a fascination. You do love bacon, but you also have a fascination for something else. Uh, the probably the most sensual of condiments, mayonnaise. That's correct. Um, and I want you to. I kind of want to know, like, talk a little bit about that love of mayo and and bacon. But I also want you to. Because I want to make sure I, I have it correctly when I re when I retell my story about you and your love for mayonnaise. Um, what is it that you write when you go to when you order a public sub or anyone's sub um, and you ask for mayonnaise? What is your because I know you have a, it's a go to because I I hear it all the time when you do it. What exactly do you say to the on the on your ordering it when you're ordering it online or something? Online or in person, I'm usually I ask usually for a shitload of mayonnaise. Yes. And then um, I'll, I'll be like a shitload of mayonnaise, and if they don't quite get, it, I'll be like, listen, I want so much so much mayonnaise on there that you're worried about maybe calling a doctor. Like that's what I want. I want enough that you're gonna say, oh, we need to call nine one, and then hold on for a second because we're gonna be pressing one pretty soon. Yeah. Yeah. That's uh, that's usually what I uh, how I remember it. I would also say I I also sometimes I think you may have also said like I think one time you wrote something like 
when you think you've given me enough mayonnaise, give me more. Right. Yes, I have done that one as well. Yes. <laughs> Uh, and and it's it's just it's a thing, man. So I'm you know I'm 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 extremely white. I'm extremely white. I cannot handle spicy anything. I think Taco Bell mild sauce is too fucking spicy. Okay. So like I can't handle any spices. So if I need a condiment, like sometimes there's ranches that are a little like I'm like oh this has a little bit of a kick. It's to got it. a little you know, too much. Little, little, yeah, kick. A, little, a little kick. I, I don't know. I don't want this. So um, so mayonnaise is just like the perfect condiment for that because you can use it for everything. I can use it for dip. You can use it for anything. Use it on sandwiches. Use it. Everything goes well with mayonnaise. Do you have a preference of mayonnaise? Dukes. That's what I thought. You like that twang. Yep. Um, what are your thoughts on Miracle Whip? It's. I mean, it's an ungodly creation, and no more should ever be said of it. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it is funny as as I've traveled to. I, I you know I'd always buy mayo whenever it's on sale. I would buy it, and then when I when I left my house, so and I, I you know I, I became nomadic in 2021, um, and I sold everything I owned, and I had all my condiments, and I realized that I, I got rid of most of them. But I was like, well, the mayonnaise is good. Mayonnaise isn't going to go bad, and so I literally had um, like 12 jars of mayonnaise that I packed in, and then when I would go to new Airbnbs, I would just pull out a jar and then just leave it as a little present. In their fridge, you know, when I was done, you know, for the however long I was there, and uh, yeah, everyone lasted. I carry, I carry travel mayonnaise, but like it's it's always with me. I, I that is uh, amazing to me, uh, and yes, I remember seeing pictures in your house of um, pantry like uh, cabinets where it's just like it was just all mayo um, going there. One of the so. Well, I, I kind of wanted to find out a little bit something that I thought was very interesting because you mentioned nomadic, um, and I know some of it was based on the personal aspect of it. Uh, but one of the things that I just know recently, you just got um, you got you got accepted. I, I want to know a little bit more about this. I, you got accepted to something in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Is that correct? Yeah. So Tulsa Remote is a program that the city of Tulsa is trying to encourage new people to move there because I think they're losing like their younger demographic. And so they're looking for people who have remote jobs, so they're not going to take a job away from anyone who lives there, but who are going to spend money there. And so they have this program you apply to, and you do a video interview and all this stuff, and you give them all your socials and everything. And uh, if they accept you, they'll give you $10,000 and to live there for a year. And so I did it just kind of off the cuff. Why not? You know, while I was uh, kind of traveling and I got accepted and, and I had been trying to decide where I wanted to settle. And I had a, li- a list of uh, even if I had, had a list of 50 places, I get Tulsa was not going to be in the, for the yeah, top 50. No. But um, and I was like, oh, I got in. So then I've actually as I've been traveling, I've stopped by there a couple times now. I spent a week there uh, recently and have realized that it is uh, it's actually not bad of a town uh, and it's somewhere that I think I'm going to enjoy. And I'm looking forward to seeing the content you create and kind of seeing you see around the city and create content. I think that's like the part where I'm I'm most intrigued by. Uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to this. I'm going to be living actually downtown, so I'll be able to explore downtown a lot. There's a whole underground tunnel system in Tulsa as well that I'll be able to explore. That's awesome. Um, one of the funniest things, though, and, and one of, also disappointing, was that they're, the biggest, nicest hotel in Tulsa is called The Mayo. The Mayo, yeah. And if anybody watched Tulsa King, the show with uh, with Stallone, uh-huh. uh, he stay. He's a gangster who stays at the Mayo, and so I was looking them up, and they actually have apartments for rent, so that you can actually rent. And I was like, wouldn't that be great just to be the bacon guy at the Mayo? Like yes. I'm, I'm bacon at Mayo here. I would just change everything to bacon at Mayo, but. Unfortunately, I looked at their apartments and the amenities that came with it were not worth the other place that I have. Like, yeah. you know, like just things like a pool and all that stuff that I really liked uh, yeah. they didn't have. And I was like really disappointed because I was like, that would have been branding that it would be completely amazing. And it would have been perfectly meant. It was meant for me then. Yeah, yeah exactly. It definitely meant to be. Um, so I'm going to give you, I kind of want to, I want, I kind of want to go the route of since you have so many different activities and so many different uh you know so many different things that you're like you know renaissance man style of i kind of want to see if you can if i give you i'll give you a topic and i want you to be able to give me either a one word an advice or a tip okay okay writing a book the tip i would give is to write uh, and, and like it really takes writing to find your voice and you need to write a lot i mean i used to write every day of the week i had a blog and i wrote seven days a week for many, many years before I even discovered my voice. And once I discovered that voice, it was indistinguishable from, and like people would would notice it. Like it was, it was something that was, it was, it was part of me. And so whenever I wrote anything, I was like, oh, this is Adam's writing. And you could tell. And so I think that's important. And I think learning that outline, it would be the tip as well. So it's funny that you say that because that's actually the class I remember taking with you uh, was finding your voice. And uh, when you describe your voice in that aspect, because and, and I and I kind of have arguments with my wife on this, so I'm kind of curious. And I know it's not one of my. I'm, I know I should be going Spitfire, but I'm. I, I like it's my podcast. I'll do what do I it, want. Do it, do it. Um, 
one of the things that she dislikes when they ed- when she edits me because I'll I'll go and I'll be like, hey, I need someone to edit because sometimes my brain goes faster than, and I just start writing. Um, but when I write, she's like, you're writing like you're talking, not as you're writing. And I, but that's me talking, and, and that's how I do it. Is that considered? Is that a definition of someone's voice like that, or is it like, or that's just pure bad, just bad literature, bad grammar, bad writing? Well, I mean, I would say all writing needs editing, and so if you're writing in that style, it's going to need editing. That's not really your voice per se, though. Okay. You know, your your voice is going to have, whether it's a certain, uh, just a certain tone to it, a certain like, my I would say that my voice tends to have um, a lot of uh, probably. Aggressive, uh, aggressive language um, with uh, like I- informality, but at the same time, a, like a formal education behind it. Like, and and there's a there's a shock in there as well. Like, there's 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 certain elements that come across, but it all but it's very authoritative at the same time. Like, that's my voice. That- Adam, that's basically describing you. Well, yeah, <laughs> exactly yeah, that's true. describing yeah. you. Like <laughs> yeah. to a T. If I had to, those are like exactly the words <laughs> I would I would be using, which is great. Um, doing comedy. Oh, doing comedy. Um, everyone should do it. Uh, like everybody should get up at least once and try an open mic. I don't care if you never never want to do comedy. You should spend f- five minutes to write or spend time to write five minutes, practice it, and get up and try it at an open mic. You're gonna bomb terribly, but it'll be a, it, it might be a life changing experience for you. I've uh, I've always kind of secretly wanted to. You should, but I've never I've never done it. Yeah, I think everybody should try it. Okay, uh, podcasting. Nobody should do it anymore. There's too many mediocre white dudes with the audacity to think that their thoughts matter. Uh, let's just stop podcasting overall. It's done. The pool is filled. There's nobody else allowed in. Uh, we're, we're all here now. We're all doing a great job, but nobody else is allowed to do it again anymore. Okay. Wedding. This one's a big one because I've already kind of asked you, and I'll probably talk to you offline more about this but as I get closer. But wedding, being a wedding efficient. It's all about the bride and groom. Nobody else matters, and uh, I would do these these ceremonies that were custom to what they liked, whatever there's their, it was their favorite TV show or movie or whatever whatever theme they wanted. I would have these inside jokes that they would be laughing at, and the audience would be lost. Grandma and grandpa would be lost, but I don't give a fuck about them. It's not their wedding. It's for these two people to remember forever, and so that's that's the only thing that that mattered to me. I love that. Um, foot photography. Uh, that's the, that's you know what I said earlier about failure. I would say, um, but I would say beyond failure, learn the rule of threes, understand lighting and framing, understand those couple things, and you can take better photographs. And then take a thousand photographs at the same time, and then you'll end up having some decent ones come out. Um, what about what about teaching? And before you answer that, I want to one of the things that you went viral on on Twitter. I think even Obama, I think, followed you or liked it. Yeah, he follows yeah. me still. Um, was the fact that you, you at one point you were a professor teaching, teaching in college and your students didn't show up and you literally like had a whole like Twitter, a Twitter stream or a broadcasting. You, you live tweeted basically and I'll let you finish. Yeah, I live tweeted nobody showing up uh, for the first like two and a half, three hours of class because it was, it was a GED prep class. So it wasn't anything too, uh, too you know, Specific or, or special, even, but it was it was something that you know they knew they had to be there. Uh, they were supposed to be there. Uh, some of them were court ordered to be there. Uh, okay, yeah, and uh, so nobody showed up. So yeah, I decided I was like, I'm going to start tweeting this, and I understand in writing and everything how to tweet things that will tend to do well. And so I was keeping that in mind. I was like, I want to tell a story with this. So I want to make sure that I, if I do an element that sounds funny, I'm going to make sure I repeat it a couple tweets later, a couple tweets later. I mean, that's kind of the, it's just common common writing and comedy senses. You want to have something that repeats and, and, and they can, you know, it'll have a virality nature, a nature to it. And, um, and it did. It, it went crazy. I was on like the Japanese news, the Chinese news, German newspapers, uh, UK, everywhere uh, f- for it. And it was funny. But as far as teaching is concerned, um, I think that I am only the type of person who wants to teach people who want to learn. Because if they're reluctant to be there, then I, I'm not going to put any effort into it. I want, I want, it's, I want people who are, are eager to learn whatever it is that I'm trying to share. When you do content strategy, copywriting, and stuff like that, um, you're obviously doing it for other industries or, or different people, not yourself. What is the... Have you noticed the kind of like a I don't know like a kind of like a common a commonality of like what they're all lacking and the reason obviously they're using you or using your talent 
I, maybe it's the fact that I, I will choose my clients because I there's some I won't work with because what I tell them is that at the very uh, what the, what the main thing they have to remember with what they're doing is that on the other end of the mes- the message the reader of your message the the consumer of your message the viewer of your message is a human being it doesn't matter if you are going B two B and you're looking at other businesses. It doesn't matter if you're B two C. It doesn't matter who you're, you're. You're talking to doctors. If you're talking to other advertising people. If you're talking to, you know, whatever. There's a person on the other end. If you can make that person smile a little bit. If you can make that person feel a little bit of humanity and a little bit of connection with what you're saying, you will have loyalty. And you'll build loyalty from those people, and a loyal, a loyal, an actually loyal customer is better than a thousand impressions from people who don't care. And so, my, I always would work with people and I'd say, "Listen, there's going to be humor in what I, I put in here. There's going to be personality. It's going to have. It's not going to be edgy because I'll pull the edge back for this, but it's it's going to be something that that shows that there's a person behind the account because it's relating to another person who's reading it. And that person to person connection exists no matter what. And that's one of the most important things I think any business can keep in mind. Love that. Uh, my last, my last one word advice tip: uh, beard care. I have not done a very good job doing the one word, have I? No, no, it's perfect. <laughs> I, 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 this is you're giving me exactly what I want. Okay, uh, beard care. Beard care. Um, conditioner. Okay, that's what I'd say. Like I, I think it's you know it's important to shampoo it very thoroughly, and then but it's nice you got to get a conditioner in there. Let it sit for a couple minutes while you you know wash your ass or whatever. Like just make sure that it sits in there and keeps your beard nice and smooth. I like it. What uh? So we'll we'll, we'll we're, we're we're at the we're getting close to my end of my lunch break here. So, um, can you, what advice would you give someone wanting to start something? Um, I would say you want to do a little research, but don't get bogged down into like clinical research. Don't get bogged down into reading about it and you know watching seminars about it and stuff like that, um, because that type of research it, it tends to. It all falls apart when you actually try to put it into practice. What you're better off doing is finding things that you like, uh, like things that you enjoy that are similar to what you want to start, and watch them and see what they do and how they do it, and, and you know, and feel free to ask them questions, and they might answer, they might not, but like just watch them, and and, and you know, and this is going to be, and I don't even know if this is appropriate for audience, but like I work with a lot of um, OnlyFans creators, and I help, I'll do help them do their photo shoots, and I've even managed some of their accounts or whatever, and sometimes nice. they'll be like, well, how do I grow my, my, you know, how do I make this so that I can actually make a living off of this? And I'm like, follow other OnlyFans creators, follow other creators who are doing the things and making the money you want to make, and see what they do, and you'll see that they do a, you know, every Monday they do something special, and they reach out to their fans in a certain way and they they use certain hashtags and they use certain key you know and i was like and just do that like take that and then apply yeah. it to your thing and i think that's important to anything is that if you want to start something look at other people who started something similar and just don't copy them but just you use them as your inspiration for what you're doing and then make it your own as you grow into it oh, i love that i love that where where can people follow you um, on social, online, and all of that. Obviously, they're going to be on the show notes. But where can they, be, if they are, uh, as they're listening to this and they want to like find out, see a little bit more about uh, you with bacon? Sure. Uh, <laughs> tell me, tell them where they can follow you. Uh, Instagram is Avitable, which is just A V I Table, and uh, Twitter X, whatever you want to call it, uh, for as long as it lasts, is still Avitable. Um, but uh, I'm also available on all the other ones. Like there's Post News now and Blue Sky. I'm on those as available. Uh, and then on TikTok, I'm actually Adam Avitable. So you just find me on there as well. And uh, my website's Avitable.com, but it's mostly just a portfolio right now. I don't actually put anything on there, but eventually it's going to be, uh, it's going to have more about my books as they come, come out as well. I love that, dude. I love that. Um, Adam, I really appreciate you actually, uh, you and I getting to hang out. Um, it's one of those things where, like I said, I've always, uh, I always appreciate you. I always come to kind of ask you a question or kind of always appreciate your feedback on things just because, you know, like I said, you kind of dabble and do a bunch of different things. And I think you're very comfortable in getting out of your comfort zone, which is something very difficult that a lot of people don't get to do. Yeah. Um, so I definitely appreciate that. And I, and I truly admire that, man. So I appreciate um, that. thank you so much. That's our show for today. So thank you so much to Adam Avitable. Um, make sure you go check him out online. Make sure you check out his books everything else like that thank you so much for having lunch with me um if you want to if you want to check out the podcast or you know if you enjoy it please share it uh if you want to support me and my brand check out deli fresh threads um but other than that keep eating sandwiches until and follow your passion thank you so much everyone Mm -hmm.